Xin chào mừng quý vị và các bạn đến với chương trình Tôi và Việt Nam trên kênh truyền hình FBC. Ngày hôm nay vị khách mời của chúng ta là bà Su McKinney, tổng giám đốc của công ty Quilla House. Hi Su, welcome to my show. Thank you. It's very nice to have you here. Lovely to be here. So today we talk about your life and your business in Vietnam. So first of all, could you please make us aware of your occupation and background? Uh, by, by background, I'm a lawyer. I was trained as a lawyer in California. During my career as a lawyer, I had the opportunity to be the Chief Assistant Secretary of State for right. California. At that time, in 1992, when uh, Bill Clinton was running for the presidency, California was the seventh largest economy in the world. Mm -hmm. So we received uh, trade delegations from all over Asia. And so I became adept at working with Asian trade delegations. And it was fascinating. Later, I had the opportunity to come to Vietnam. Very impressive. And also, um, as far as I know that uh, you first arrived here uh, in 1994, the year in which the US and also its allies lifted the embargo on Vietnam. So could you please share with me the reasons why you came to Vietnam at this particular time? Actually, I was invited to Bangkok to go to Thailand oh, yeah? uh, in my capacity as a lawyer to meet with a Thai client. And the Thai client was sending a business delegation to Vietnam and asked me to go along. And at the time, I hadn't really been following Vietnam in the news. So I asked them, well, is it legal? Can I get a visa? <laughs> and they said, yes, uh, President Clinton lifted the embargo on Vietnam, and you can get a visa here at the Vietnamese embassy in Bangkok. And I said, well, then, please, I want to go. <laughs> and as we drove into town um, and came from the airport, I saw that there were very few cars. There were some motorbikes, a lot of bicycles. And as we drove, people saw me on the bus and they began to follow the bus. Oh my God. And when we finally <laughs> stopped, there was a small crowd waiting. And as I got out, I was last <laughs> to get out of the bus. And as I descended the steps, the people surrounded me and they were saying, where are you from? Where are you from? And for were you scared? I, I thought about being scared, and for a moment it crossed my mind to say, I'm Canadian! <laughs> but the people weren't hostile, they were just anxious. Mm. So I stammered a bit and I said, I, I, I'm an American. And one of the men who'd been following the bus didn't even have a bicycle. He had run alongside the bus. And when I said, I'm an American, he, he reached out to me. He, he didn't touch me, but he wanted to. And he said, are you coming back? And it made such an impression on me because right. I wasn't sure if I would be welcome in Vietnam or mm. not. It made me think instead, I had the opportunity at the time to conduct some business in, in Thailand, but the, the Vietnamese people just captured my heart at that moment and I thought there must be something I can do here. Vietnam is going to open up. I wonder what that's going to be like. Right. So basically you came here because uh, you saw opportunities in Vietnam. Oh, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, as I saw it in, uh, in June of 1994, I saw one traffic signal light uh, <laughs> in, in Saigon, in the center. So I thought, okay, there's a lot of development that's going to happen here. Right. So besides all of uh, those details, what were, your, what were your first impressions of the country overall? Uh, the resourcefulness of the people, mm -hmm. the work ethic of mm -hmm. the people, the hunger for education and knowledge and opportunity. They were ready for, for opportunity. Right. So you saw opportunity to uh, like to do some business in Vietnam at that time? Exactly. And um, how did you set up your business uh, at the very first place? Uh, can you please share at the, the story? At the very first, I wasn't sure what would be possible or not. At that time, there was a non-convertible currency, mm -hmm. foreign investment law in paperback, about that many pages, no stock market, no really established international arbitration or, or business systems. So I spent a couple of years just looking and listening 
and talking to any foreign executive that would give me some time. What are you doing? How are you doing it? What works? What doesn't work? And I tried to see where I might fit in. But one of my first conversations with a big Vietnamese company was when that first trip, that first week with the Thais, the brother-in-law of the Thai people was actually Viet Q. And so he was coming back to see family that he hadn't seen for many years. So he took me to meet his uncles. Right. And his uncles were doing business. Mm -hmm. And when they realized they had an American lawyer in the middle of this Thai delegation, they said, <laughs> hey, you, would you come with us, <laughs> They grabbed you right away. They grabbed me, and they <laughs> knew I was helping the Thai company with some business. And they started asking me questions. We need $30 million for a hydropower plant. We need $12 million for a sh sugar refinery. Do you know? Can you get? <laughs> and after a, f a couple days, they felt a little more comfortable. And they said, now, AT&T, is that a big company? And I thought, oh, there, there must be something I can do here. Right. Could you please share with us the most interesting lessons that you have learned by living and working in <laughs> Vietnam? Well, I'll, I'll tell you a very early, early stage lesson, the, the first feasibility uh, study that we were putting together for the export of a particular commodity. Mm -hmm. And we had traveled through 13 provinces in, in Vietnam. And at that time, it was very difficult to communicate. You could not call ahead and make an appointment with the People's Committee. But if you arrived, they knew you were in town and they would come to meet you. <laughs> Hello, we want to do business. What can you do? So we looked at this, this commodity and the, the province said, we have a business plan for that. Oh, good, please, let me see it. And I looked at it and I said, but, but wait a minute. Here's the price of the commodity. And they said, yes. I said, but that's not the price. And with sincerity and earnestness, they said, oh, but you're a foreigner. You should pay more. And that was the attitude at the time. So it was um, Vietnam then discovered that, OK, there's an international playing field. And here's, if we want to compete, here's the price in India, here's the price in China, here's the price in South America. Oh, but we have skilled labor and we have good agricultural products. We can compete there. And they have. So what is your opinion about the current state of affairs in Vietnam? Are you as optimistic as the rest of market participants regarding the country's prospects? Oh, well, yes, I am. And a lot of it comes down to the resourcefulness and mm -hmm. the capability of the Vietnamese people. And the fact that Vietnam is now to be part of TPP is very exciting. Exactly. Because the transparency and the international standards are something that the Vietnamese people and company, they can meet that. They can do it. So now they'll have their chance. Right. Thank you very much. Let's take a short break and we'll be back in a few minutes. Thưa quý vị, vừa rồi là phần 1 của chương trình Tôi và Việt Nam trên kênh truyền hình FBNC phỏng vấn bà Sue McKinney là tổng giám đốc của công ty Quilla Health. Chúng tôi xin phép được quay trở lại trong vòng ít phút nữa.